Hi, my name is Rex. I'm the primary instructor for Bell Speak, which is a California Department of Insurance approved Bell Education provider. Now, I have to be really, really super clear here. The decision to wear body armor or to engage in an occupation that requires body armor is a very serious one and is not to be taken lightly. This video is for educational purposes only. It is to give you a resource to be able to ask questions, to be able to do your research, to think and say, okay, is this type of body armor really what I need for what I'm going to be doing? One of the more common questions that I get is in relation to body armor. Where do I get body armor? What type of body armor am I looking for? What I'd like to do is share with you uh, some vests that go way back. This is one of my original vests. Uh, it is dated 1990. This isn't a vest you want to wear while you're bounty hunting. It's not a vest you want to loan to any of your partners. Uh, as we move down the way here, I got another vest. This one was purchased in 1996. I was a lot thinner back then. It is a level two vest, uh, not suggested for bounty hunting either because of the level rating and then we move on to another vest now i had another identical vest just like this the vest that i had just like this i did loan out but i had knowledge of its history where it came from what it had been through this one i do not so this one may turn into target practice at a later date finally we get into the vest that i've worn for the past 10 years and you got to watch these expiration dates because they creep up on you really quick. I was standing there, I was looking at a video, and I thought, that was 10 years ago. And the body armor I was wearing then, I'm wearing today. So I immediately went out and purchased some new body armor, which I'll cover here in a letter segment. Okay, let's cover some basics, nuts and bolts about body armor. This is not an in-depth, all you need to know about body armor. This is just to point you, as I indicated earlier, in the right direction with respect to asking the right questions and doing the proper research. First things first, National Institute of Justice, commonly called NIJ, 01.01.04 uh, is the relatively new standard. And what that translates to and what we're talking about is blunt force trauma. We're to, it's about 44 millimeters or 1.7 inches. If you look right here, I drew a little gun. There's the little bullet. And as you come over here, look at the indention right there. If a vest, when impacted by a round, indents more than 1.7 inches or 44 millimeters, and if you look, as I hold my finger up right here, that's about as far as it can indent. If it indents further than that, that is going to be a problem. The reason why it's going to be a problem is because it could injure your organs internally simply by blunt force trauma. In other words, the bullet doesn't have to enter your body to kill you. All it has to do is make a big enough dent in the body armor and you've got serious health problems. Which brings us to levels. There are multiple levels of body armor. I'm going to suggest right now as a long time, uh, 23 year bounty hunter, go level 3A. You're looking for comfort, concealability. You don't want to be too restricted. So level 3A uh, is rated, for example, to stop a 44 mag jacketed hollow point. That's a hot 44 magnum round, strongly suggested concealable body armor. Okay, this is my currently purchased vest. It is American body armor. And one of the things since we're talking about blood force trauma is the fact that it has an impact plate and they call it a trauma plate. And what that does is it protects the most vital organ that you could possibly be, be hit with center mass and that would be your heart. If you look right here for some of the more precarious situations that I myself may get myself into, you'll notice that I added a groin protector, which is to protect my uh, bladder, groin, et cetera, et cetera, primarily femoral artery. You don't want to get hit there. You will bleed out before uh, first responders can get there. Um, moreover, when you purchase your body armor, you want to get professionally fitted. You don't want to buy anything off the internet. You don't want to buy anything off some anonymous, who knows what, where it's been, which is extremely critical. I'm going to talk about it here very shortly. But one of the most common mistakes that people new to body armor do is they buy body armor body armor with the front panel too long. So what happens is when they sit down, the bottom of the panel 
hits to your duty belt or your pant belt or whatever it is you're wearing and it jams up into your neck or your throat while you're driving. So you end up with a body armor that's extremely uncomfortable and there's a good chance once you get to the point where it's starting to choke you, you're probably not going to wear it and that is really, really bad. Another very important point to understand about body armor, particularly body armor designed to stop ballistic threats, is that they're not rated to stop edge weapons such as knives, ice picks, uh, that's going to require a specialized body armor. So when you pick your body armor, understand it is not designed to stop sharp weapons. I have to say this one more time. This is so important. Please do not purchase used body armor. Let me emphasize that this way. Don't borrow your buddy's body armor. If he can't tell you where it came from, uh, when it was manufactured, did it sit in a hot car all summer long and then all winter long? Body armor is not to be left in a vehicle year round. It, uh, Kevlar tends to degrade. So if your bounty hunting partner can't tell you the history of the armor that he is loaning you, he shouldn't be loaning it to you. Conversely, if you do not know the history of the body armor you have, don't loan it to your partners. Um, it would be a really, really bad situation if the body armor was so degraded and a perfectly defeatable round penetrate a vest and injured or killed your partner. A word about tactical vest. For example, here's a relatively new vest. And as you look at this vest, you know, you got your pockets and it's all tactical and everything. And you got your little suicide gun grab guy right here. Um, here's a problem with wearing a tactical vest. Let's say this was a vest that actually had body armor panels in it. And this is something that you just put on for bounty hunting. First off, this isn't appropriate for all bounty hunting cases. Every bail jumper you chase, each case is unique. No two cases are identical. Some cases you may approach in street clothes like this, you're going to want concealable body armor. You're not going to be able to approach or walk or go certain places with this. But let's take it a step further. If you're a bad guy and you're intent on taking me out and I had this on, where would you aim? Okay? Conversely, if I had, let's say, body armor on, and it was concealed and you had a split second choice to make a decision, the hope here is that you're gonna aim center mass. And if you wear one of these, because you're going in a situation understanding that the bad guys are probably gonna aim neck up, you may want to consider also using one of these. And uh, the Bell Speak Bell Education School also has a store and we have different types of level 3A uh, Kevlar helmets. And you can see that at realbountyhunting.com, but that is incidental to the point of this video. Let's raise a really important point here, believe it or not, is something really worth mentioning. Uh, this vest right here doesn't work if you don't wear it. Now, why am I saying that? Because people have been killed out in the streets who had vests but didn't wear them. Let me say that again. This won't work if you don't wear it. Just to refresh, when you store your vest, store it flat at room temperature. Now, one of the other items, accessories you could pick up are these uh, impact plates. You can take these, put them in a jacket. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually a level 3A uh, trauma pad. And you got to be really, really super careful because some of these, and you'll notice this is unmarked, it actually came instead of a vest, are actually not ballistic rated. They're just padding for the blunt force trauma protection. So make sure that if you get one of these, and it's intended for ballistic protection, that it really is a ballistic panel and not just something that was to absorb the uh, impact of a bullet. Uh, this wraps up our quick uh, startup guide on how to research body armor for purchase. Again, my name is Rex from the Bell Speak Bell Training School, and you guys go out there and you be safe.